In this video, we're just going to concentrate on how to create a startup macro. A lot of people have asked me about it. I have done it in a different video, but I thought it was time to do it again. And on this video, we're just going to focus on the startup macro. That's all we're going to do. So we can just have this called startup macro video. And that way, everybody will know how to create one. And then maybe one day in the future, I can use it in my videos and people won't complain that they didn't know how to create a startup macro. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up uh, FreeCAD. And I always start in part design. You start in whatever you want to start in. And we will, we're going to use this button over here. And we're going to record the macro. Um, first thing, last video, I forgot to switch on my... Uh, mouse tracer and key uh, press recorder. Apologize for that. So I've remembered it this time. So here we go. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you what version of FreeCAD I'm using. This should work in any of the previous versions because I've used it f forever since I've been using FreeCAD. So uh, this is version 0 0.20 and it's the revision number 29177 and I haven't updated it recently. I went and had a look and it looked like it was the same version. So I haven't updated it. Um, I did look at the, the next version, the 21 um, last week. And as far as I could tell, the topological naming problem had not been solved yet. So I'll keep an eye on it. As soon as I think it's solved, I'll let you know. And we'll start using that version. For now, let's go ahead with this one. And to start a macro, you just press this red button. It says macro recording. I click on there. We need to give it a unique name. I'm going to call mine start up. And I'm going to call it 101 because I already have a startup. That's the one I use. You can call it whatever you want to call it. And notice that it saves it in your macro path by default. Is going to be your username, documents, your FreeCAD macros. That's going to be wherever you normally save your FreeCAD files. I like mine to be in there. It keeps them all separate. And I'm going to hit the record button. And now once I hit record, everything that we do will be recorded into the macro. So we want to be careful that we only do the things that we want to keep in the macro, otherwise we're going to have to edit them all out. So let's try this. So I'm going to hit the record. First thing I want to do is to create a file. So I'm going to do a, create an empty document. And then I'm going to create a part. And then I'm going to create a body. Once I've done that, I'm going to save this. So I'm going to say save. And I want to give it a name. I'm going to just going to call it a 101. And don't worry, I already have an A101, but I'm just going to save it as that because we're going to edit that save name out because we want to be able to save it to whatever name we like. So I'm just going to say yes. And then all we're going to do is we're going to start a sketch. And I'm going to stop right there. And the reason I'm going to stop there is because when we have this macro, we want to be able to select which plane we want to create our sketch on. So that's basically it. I'm going to stop this macro. And then as you see, once I stop the macro, the edit button becomes available. So I'm going to hit edit and we'll walk through our macro. So edit our macro, it's called Startup 101. So it's important that you remember what the name of the macro is. And then you're just going to click on edit over here. And now I'm editing the macro. Anything you see that is in green is comments. It What it does, what this system does, when it records a macro, as it's doing things, when it no longer needs that thing, it will, it will comment it out, which is useful because if, for instance, you save something with a name, the command to hit the save button is actually there ahead. I'll show you that in just a second. So this part here is, is literally just a comment. 
Um, we can leave it in if we want, or it has the macro name in it, so we can leave it in there. Then the, these next two lines we don't need, so I'm just going to delete those. So I'm highlighting them, and I hit the delete key. And then, so the first thing it does is app.newDocument unnamed. That's what we want to do. So we're going to continue to do that. All these other commented parts we don't need. So I'm going to highlight them and I'm just going to delete them. Now you can keep, if you want, this as begin command, standard part, ends um, command, standard new. You can keep those comments if you want. I don't want them. I'm going to delete them. I'll never look in this macro again once it's done. So. I have five of them and I don't look at them. <laughs> it's up to you if you want to keep comments. You, you do that if you want to do that. I know some people are, love to have comments in there. You can actually create your own comments too. You just use the, the pound key or, the, or if you're English, use the hash key. And then you can type in whatever you like after that. The only one that I would keep is this config UTF-8 at the top. That's actually the encoding for your characters. So it's important that you keep that one. So I would just leave that one alone. So we have the app active document part label, and we're called that part part, which is normal. That's just standard stuff. So we're going to keep that. We're going to get rid of the next two lines that were in green. And that leaves us with app.active document recompute. So recompute is like a refresh of the screen. So that's what it's doing. Again, a couple more comments. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of those. And now I have app active document add an object, and it's the body. So it's adding the body. We want to do that. That's all good. And then I'm going to get rid of the next few lines of comments. That's four lines that were green. And then the next command is app active document par add object app active document body so that's all part of adding that body and then at active document recompute as we know that's just like a refresh now in this next section you see where it says app get document unnamed save as and then it gives it that name that i i saved it as i don't want to do that otherwise it's always going to save it as that a101 and i don't really want to do that if you want it to always save that your first your file as a uh, you know a standard name you can do that but what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep the line above it which is the one that actually hits the save dialog box so i'm going to uncomment that how do we uncomment we just take out the pound or the hash in front of that sentence so we're going to go back two spaces and now you can see the GUI send message to active view save is live. Then I'm going to delete that line that tells it to save it as A101. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to delete those lines above that were all green as well, just to get rid of them. Like I said, if you want to keep the comments, you certainly can do that. And then. Finally, we want to start a new sketch. So we're going to get rid of this comment. And then this line where it says GUI run, dot run command part design underscore new sketch zero. That's the line that we need to keep. So I'm going to go back to the front of that sentence and I'm going to backspace off that. Um, hash or pound sign and then that's all i need to do I'm, I'm actually going to delete the rest of this i don't need to keep the end part either so i'm just going to delete that and then finally actually i've got two blank lines in there so i'm just going to delete those off as well so that is our complete macro so all we've done is cleaned up the comments and then two of the commands we wanted to uncomment and keep. So now what do we do? We want to test this GUI, or sorry, this macro. We want to test this macro. So what we're going to do is we are going to save it. And to save it, there's you can either hit File, Save, 
or we can go over here and we can just hit this X close tab and it's going to say, do you want to save this? So I'm going to say yes. Now close the macro. I said yes, I'm going to cancel this because that's what we were doing before and I'm going to close this A101. So I'm going to discard it. I don't need that. Now I'm back to uh, the situation where I have a blank screen as if I just started FreeCAD. And then what I'm going to do is I go over to here to macro. And I can go recent macros. And you'll see the first one in my list is Startup 101. So I'm going to hit that. And it has created an unnamed file. It's created a part. I'm going to select a name for this. I'm going to call it A101 again. So now notice it's letting me pick the name. I'll say save. Yes, I do want to overwrite it. Then it pops up my sketch. And if I go back over to my model, you can see there's a body there. And my sketch is being created inside that body. So I'm going to pick the XY plane. I'll say OK. My macro is finished now. So if I close my sketch, you should see I have my file that's saved as A101, my part, my body, my sketch, and I'm able to edit and, and create that sketch as I would like. So that is how you create a macro. Hopefully that's straightforward enough for you to be able to create your own macro. And you can actually see you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to create it and always have a, na a particular name for your um, part you, or your, for your, your document, you can absolutely do that. You can create the part with a name if you want. You can create the body with a name if you want. You can also pick the plane on which you're going to sketch if you want. If you do all of that, it makes the macro fairly rigid, fairly inflexible. If you leave it the way I've done it, you can pick the name for the document. You can allow the part and body to be the standard part and body because you can always change them later. And then you can also pick the plane on which you want to create the sketch. Hopefully this video is helpful. I think the startup macro is fantastic. For me, I never start drawing without using it, except for when I'm creating a video for you guys because a lot of people complain that if I used a macro that I've done something that they don't understand and, and it uh, sets them back. Honestly, it's a series of videos. So I assume that you've learned from the previous videos so I don't have to keep repeating those things even though I do sometimes repeat them. I assume that you have built some skills from the prior videos. And if you haven't, I strongly recommend that if you're doing this series, start from the beginning and work your way through. It may take some time, but you'll learn lots of skills and you'll find these things become second nature very quickly if you work your way through. Anyway, that's all I've got for this week. I just want to put together a quick video so that everybody can see we're back in the... Uh, in the game, we're actually going to be creating videos often, and hopefully you're going to enjoy them and learn more, and we're going to keep moving through free CAD and create some great stuff. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, my subscriber base is growing gradually, but it's very slow. Um, so if you're watching the video and you haven't subscribed, do me a favor, just hit the subscribe button. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. If you want to get early access to things or you want to get other input that I do, uh, you can always become a patron or you can uh, join the, the channel. You can hit the join button and join the channel and both get information and, and insider stuff that I don't publish publicly. So again, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give us a like so that other people can see the video and I'll see you in the next one.